Hello. Today we are going to demonstrate how simple it is for you as a website developer to offer your visitors the option of changing your web pages to their preferred language. And you're not limited to just a few popular languages, you can have all languages. The Google Chrome browser offers this to its users by default if the user hits a foreign language web page, but Firefox and Internet Explorer do not yet perform this action by default for their users. Many people using Firefox and Internet Explorer are not presented with any options of changing your web page to their preferred language. And you might want to make sure that that option is available to everyone, no matter what browser they use. Before we get into the lesson, let's show you a finished product of what you'll get after the lesson. So here I am in my AdamCorey.com website, and I'll go to Select Language, and I can change it to Spanish. You can change to any language you want. And it's just a couple of lines of code and it'll only take you a few minutes. The first step is to sign into your Google account if you're not already signed into Google. The next step is to type Google Translate into the Google search bar. Now click the Google Translate link. And in the middle of the page you see down here it says Google Translate for Business. Just hit Website Translator. And that's how you can get access to the plugin. I've already established one for developphp.com. But what you want to do here, if you don't have any sites established here, is hit Add New Website. And then Google says, well played, let's do this. Now what is the URL of your website? My website, which is adamcorey.com. And then the next question is, what is the original language of your website? Mine is English, so I'll press Next. Now here's where we can adjust the plugin settings. It says, set the options you want for translating your website. You can change these options later, too. So translate languages, I'll, I'll just leave it as all languages, but you can set specific languages if you only want, for instance, French, Spanish, Italian, popular European languages, or you can set whatever you want. I'll just leave it on all languages. And then display mode, you can set as vertical. And then it has the little powered by Google Translate uh, words underneath the uh, drop down, horizontal where the words are on the side, or drop down only where it's only the drop down. And I'm going to show you guys how you can style this drop down, this element. Now I'll leave this checked here where it's automatically display translation banner to user speaking languages other than the language of your page. So a little banner will come up at the very top of the browser communicating to just those people. And you can also click here to add your analytics link up if you want to link up to your analytics for that site. And then once I have all the plugin settings I want, I just get code. It says ready to roll. Now let's talk code. Paste this code into your website. Okay, here I am in the index.html page for my website and I'll go to view the code. So it says place this meta tag before the closing head tag. So I'll grab this meta tag right here and I'll put it into place. And actually, I noticed that it works. See, here's my closing head tag. I'll put that meta tag they suggested right there. And I noticed that this works. The plugin will still work if you don't put this meta tag into place. But this meta tag is for relating unique content ID to Google Translate for you. But like I said, I noticed that the plugin works without adding this meta tag at its basic level for translating a web page. So now we grab the code that says place this snippet where you'd like to display the website translator plugin on your web page. So I'll grab that snippet of code, press control C to copy it, and I'll go right under my div top here. So let me collapse that div top so it doesn't get in our way. And I'm going to put a new div into place here. Put the closing div tag, then go down a couple of lines and inside of that div container, I'm going to add the code that Google offered me in the translator plugin. Now since I have the meta tag in place now and the code that they suggested, let me press control S and I'll FTP this file onto my server and run it live in a browser. Okay, here I am on my web page and you can see that the plugin is sitting right here. First of all, I don't want it all the way on the edge of my page. I want it tucked in maybe around this area somewhere right there. So let's go back into the code and here's the div that contains all the code that Google gave me. So I'll give this div some style. I'll make its width maybe 850 pixels. And I'll give it a margin of 0 pixels and auto. So what it'll have is 0 pixels for the top and bottom margins and auto for the left and right margins. That way the 850 wide container will be centered directly in the page. 
And if we go back into our browser and we refresh, we'll see that it's sitting where I wanted it to sit now because it's contained in an 850 wide div. Right here, there's an 850 wide div that is set to center in the page. So the plugin is just sitting on the left side of that 850 wide div. Now, for really understanding how to style this thing up, I need you guys to go into Google Chrome or any browser that lets you inspect an element that your mouse is over. So I put my mouse over the element, right click, inspect element, and then a window is going to pop up. So a window popped up, and what it shows me is all of the element names. So you can see that I have my Google Translate element div here, and then inside of it, there's all kind of other uh, classes and IDs that I can target. For instance, if I wanted to change the color of the text that says select language in between that span element, I would just target this A class of Google TE menu value and target its child span element. So let me show you what I mean. I'll target the Google TE menu value class. So in my web page code, I can just go into my style, my CSS for the web page, and target the A element with a class of Google TE menu value. Google TE menu value, open, close, curly braces. And we wanted to target the span element inside of that because that's where those letters reside. So I'm going to target the span element inside of that A tag they have. And I'll change its color to anything that I want. And let's make it a crazy color so you can really see the difference. Press Control S and then FTP your file. And then refresh your web page. So you can see now I have like a hot pink or magenta color as the select language text. So basically what I did was I went into the code. I used Google Chrome to inspect element. And what that did is it shows me all of the things that were rendered dynamically into that element by Google. Basically, it shows you all of the code that Google places into that div dynamically. And you can go through and target all of these things that you want. Now I'm going to target this class of Goog TE Gadget Simple. And that's also a div that's dynamically rendered at runtime that you really can't see unless you inspect the element. So that's Goog TE Gadget Simple. Press Control S and FTP this up to the web. Now let's give this a refresh. You can see we have nice rounded edges on that element now. And that div is what we target for all. And you can also give that a background if you want that to be a black background with the pink text on it. And you might not even want that underline. You see how that ugly black underline comes into play? When I put my mouse over it, I think we can get rid of that. So I'll try and get rid of that and make the background for the whole element black and see what happens. So what I'll do is I'll target the A element again make another rule right above it but don't target its child span this one's gonna target the A directly and we're gonna make text decoration none that way it doesn't have any underline effect when the mouse goes over it and let's also give this like we said a background color of black and we can change the text color to a nice light blue or something like that maybe right there Press Control S and FTP this up to the web. So you see there? And you can also target the borders of that element. Maybe you want to give it a little bit of padding. So let's go here and say padding, maybe seven pixels. And I can also change the border styles if I want. So if I refresh the page now, we'll see a little bit more padding around everything, which makes it all look a little more cushioned and comfortable. And I think we got rid of the underline effect on the text and the arrow. So now I'll just leave it up to you guys to find the ways to style this iframe element that pops up. Because you can go into the code and see everything. You can see right here the iframe right there. Class of Google TE menu iframe. And there's other elements that you can play with styling all about the, uh, the Google Translate website plugin. So now let's use it again and let's change this to Arabic. Now it's very important for you to keep in mind that you can also put this code into your PHP include files. That way you just have to add it once and it will appear on thousands of dynamic pages, okay? So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'm not going to be offering any source code. You guys can just watch the video and get your code from Google like I did.
and I showed exactly everything I did in the code and you can just copy it straight from the video if you want to use the CSS that I applied and things like that but everything I grabbed was pretty much what Google offered me